our primary criterion for choosing a symbol code is that we want to achieve good compression. And our metric for how well a code compresses the source is the expected code word length. We defined the expected code word length. It's the sum over all the source symbols of the length of the code word associated with that symbol times the probability of that symbol occurring. And here this P is the PMF for our discrete memory list source. We have some sequence of random variables distributed according to the PMF P. And of course these are IID for a discrete memory list source. Now, we would like to choose a code to try to minimize this expected code word length. So the first thing to notice is that this only depends on the lengths. You know, P, well, P is fixed, of course, we can't control that. But when we're choosing our code, the only way that it depends on the code is through these lengths. So any two codes which have the same length for the same code word are going to be equivalent with respect to our objective of minimizing this quantity. So the problem of trying to optimize our code reduces to a problem only involving this length function, only involving this set of lengths. But of course, we can't just you know, choose any old lengths. We can't like set these all to zero or something. They have to be valid. There has to be a uniquely decodable code with those sets of lengths. And that's where the Kraft-McMillan inequality comes in. Kraft-McMillan tells us that as long as those lengths satisfy that 1 over b to the lengths is less or equal to 1, then we know that there exists a uniquely decodable code with those lengths. And in, so that, that was what Kraft told us. And in fact, he told us that there's a prefix code with those lengths. And McMillan said that, in fact, that for any uniquely decodable code, the lengths satisfied this inequality. So in fact, this is a necessary and sufficient condition on the lengths for there to exist a uniquely decodable code. And of course, the lengths, since they're the length of code words, they also need to be integers that are non-negative. Now, this is fantastic because it characterizes the validity of, the set of, of a set of lengths through this simple algebraic condition this simple sum. So thanks to Kraft Macmillan, the problem of finding an optimal code with respect to this criterion reduces to the problem of minimizing this function of L subject to this constraint on L. And in the next couple of videos, we're going to directly attack this constrained minimization problem and see what we can figure out. So let's so let's get started. So let's do it. So first, let's simplify notation a little bit and let's call pi p of xi and li l of xi where we label the elements of our source alphabet x1, x2, x3, and so on. And let's make the, the simplifying assumption that all the, the p's are strictly positive. So we, were, we will assume that pi is strictly positive for all i. This is going to simplify life a little bit. This is, this is not a, an essential, you know, critical thing that we have to assume. But it's going to help us to avoid, there are certain technicalities that arise if some of them are zero. But as a practical matter, you know, if, if pi was equal to zero for some i, then that would mean that the probability of xi occurring was zero. And as a practical matter, you know, we could just, that xi doesn't even enter into things. We don't even need a code word for that because it, it never occurs. So we could just throw it out of our source alphabet and, and be just as well off. Okay, so now that we have our notation, let's write down the problem that we're trying to solve. So let's write down the minimization problem. So we want to minimize this sum over all i's, li pi, subject to the constraint, subject to this constraint. So we're minimizing expected length, subject to the Kraft inequality sum over sum of 1 over b to the li 
less or equal to 1. And this minimization, this minimization is over the L's, and it's over all L's that are, strictly speaking, they're, they're going to need to be integers, non-negative integers, in fact. But that looks a little hairy, you know, minimizing over integers, that seems kind of hard. So let's, let's simplify our life a little bit. And let's suppose, let's just, let's just think about minimizing over all real valued L's. Let's allow even to be negative. So let's say for all I, L, I, let me put it here. So for all I, L, I is just real valued. So that is going to be, so let's write down that, that assumption. So we will allow, so we're going to relax the original problem to allow the lengths to be real valued. Later, we'll reintroduce this integer constraint. But for now, let's simplify life quite a bit and just think about real valued lengths. This makes it makes life easier, of course, because because we can use calculus when we're dealing with all real values. So sum over i here. So now these sums, I just wrote i subscript i for the sum because in general these might be infinite sums or they, they could be finite sums. So we'll just we'll just sort of leave it sort of ambiguous there. Could be either one. Okay, now so here we have this is our problem, and here we have a constrained minimization problem. And if you're familiar with Lagrange multipliers, then it should immediately pop into your head that, hey, maybe we can use Lagrange multipliers to solve this constrained minimization problem. And in fact, we're going to try to do just that. So I'm going to assume that you're familiar with Lagrange multipliers in the next, next video or two as we're going through this. If you're not, may, I might maybe I'll make eventually a, a video on Lagrange multipliers. But if you're not, then actually this going through him in, in the next video or two for this problem might actually be not a bad example of how to apply Lagrange multipliers. Okay, so first, let's see if we can simplify, before we get to the Lagrange multipliers, let's see if we can simplify this minimization problem a bit. So here we have an inequality constraint. Let's make, let's try to make life easier by see if we can reduce this to actually an equality constraint. So let's think about this constraint here. Suppose, suppose that, th so we're trying to minimize this and we're, we're we have this, this, this is a set, this constraint des defines some subset of L's. You know, you have all the L's, all the possible L's, and then there's some subset of L's that satisfy this. So suppose that this, that the, the, the minimizing L's, that there was a minimizing set of L's that actually satisfied this inequality strictly. Well, what would happen then? So let's suppose, suppose L is such that this quantity is minimal, is minimal, and this inequality holds strictly strictly less than one. Well, what can we say about the L's? The L's are, are all real numbers. And look at one of these terms here, one over B to the L I. When L I is large, that's making this small. That's making this smaller. And when L is small, like negative, this is getting larger because this is a, this is, this is a, you know, B is greater or equal to one. This is, uh, you know, some fraction. So when L is large, it's going to, going to zero. And when L is small, when L is negative, this is getting big. So when L is zero is, is the critical point, or I mean, it's critical in some sense. It's, it's the, when, when L I is zero, this is equal to one. So if any of these LIs equals zero, then this inequality is not going to hold because these are all non-negative. So we're summing up a bunch of non-negative things. If any of them, if any of the LIs is zero, then that term is one, and this is this is not going to hold. And even further, if any of them is less or equal, is is less than zero. So if any of the LIs is less or equal to zero, then that term is going to be greater or equal to one, and this will not be satisfied. So this implies LI strictly positive 
for all i. But wait, we, we were assuming that this quantity was minimal. And if all the li's are strictly positive, then we could, we could make one of them a little bit smaller and get this quantity smaller. Because we're assuming, so, well, we, we're assuming that all the pi's are, are strictly positive. So we could take any of these li's and make it just a tiny bit smaller. And that term is in the sum is going to get smaller. And so this will be, this will, that will contradict the, the supposition that this was in fact minimal. So that would be a contradiction. And in fact, even if we didn't assume this, since the p's, the, these are the probabilities, the p's sum to one, then at least one of these is greater than zero. And so we could choose the corresponding li, reduce it a little bit, and con obtain a contradiction. So this is a contradiction. So that implies that any minimal lengths, any L's that are minimal for this, in fact, satisfy this inequality with equality. That's exactly what this is saying. So in fact, we, so there's, there's no need to even consider the L's for which the, the, there's a strict inequality here. We only need to consider the L's for which equality holds. So we can, we have reduced this original problem to a simpler problem hopefully simpler i think it i think it's simpler it is going to be simpler subject to the constraint this equals 1 and over the same l's okay so now we have now an equality constraint so now let's let's think about our our new and new and improved problem so as a function of L, of, of the L's, this is linear. So that's very nice function. And, but this one, let's see, uh, I don't know. This one, this one looks a little ugly. You know, one over B to the L I, gosh, this is some nonlinear thing here. This looks a little ugly. Hmm. So what are we going to do about that? Well, let's, let's try to, let's see if we can, we can fix this up, make this a nicer constraint by doing a change of variable. So let's do it. Let's do the following change of variable. Let's let qi, we'll introduce a vari some new variables qi. Let qi equal one over b to the li. Or in other words, if we, if we solve for, what happens if we solve for li here? One over qi, or in other words. So now if we wanted to solve for li, we would take log base b of this. So we would take log base b of this. We would get li equals log base b, 1 over qi. OK. So, so let's do this change of variable. Now, I should, I should say, in order to take this log, you know, our assumption, you know, b is, b is a positive integer. It's, but if it's 1, then we can't necessarily do this. So we need to make another assumption here. Let's assume that B, maybe I'll, yeah, I'll put it here, I guess. Assume B is strictly greater than one. So in other words, greater or equal to two. That's almost, I mean, that's essentially always going to be the case, you know, usually binary or ternary or, or what have you. Okay, so now let's let's rewrite our problem using our new our new uh, change of variable. So we have our problem is minimizing over what's L. So we need to plug in L i's here. So we have P i log base B one over Q i subject to. And now this looks very nice because we can just plug in the Q i's sum of the qi's is 1. And now the, the l's are, were, were real numbers. And so what are the q's? So we're, we're now minimizing over q's. And our q's, well, they have to be strictly positive. So here we're going to have qi. All the qi's are going to be strictly positive in order for there to exist some l's that correspond to those q's. 
Okay, let's stop there for now. This, that's a pretty good stopping place. We will stop there for now, now that we have our, our new and improved minimization problem, even more improved. And next time we will attack this problem.